Do you ever have to wait in your vehicle when you're charging or when picking someone up? Why not watch some YouTube to pass the time? But do you hold it in your hand? Oh, modern phones are so large and heavy. Where do you prop it up in your vehicle? There isn't anywhere to put it. And you want to use your vehicle's speakers, right? Oh, what about the terrible Bluetooth latency? There has to be a better way. Introducing CarStream on Android Auto. Just plug your phone into your vehicle's USB and press CarStream. Watch YouTube to your heart's content. Also, no more audio latency. Do not watch YouTube while driving. Distracted driving could cause injury, bodily harm, and general loss of sanity. Welcome everyone to Ready, Steady, Charge. My name is Solomon, and this is our second video in our series, Do It Like Tesla, where we try to replicate the Tesla experience using non-Tesla EVs. If you haven't seen our first video, it's right here, where we play beach buggy racing on the Hyundai Kona EV, just like Tesla Arcade. Being able to play video games in your EV, using the EV like a games console, um, the practicality of that is questionable. However, being able to watch YouTube in the comfort of your vehicle, I think that is very useful to many people. Whether you're waiting for someone or when you're charging, um, watching YouTube is a great way to pass the time. Now, Tesla vehicles can already do this, albeit without the need of a phone and having a very large screen for a good viewing experience. But I think the setup I'm about to show you is going to be quite useful for a lot of you. To start the car stream app, basically you got to plug your phone into the vehicle first via a USB cable, just like this. Okay. And the next thing that will happen is the vehicle will recognize the phone and we can start Android Auto. Once you are in Android Auto, um, it shows you the list of apps. So let's scroll down, and here is CarStream. So click on that. It will take a moment to start. And here we go. This is uh, YouTube, and this is actually one of our videos. So this app is basically like a browser. Um, it's almost as if you're watching YouTube through uh, the YouTube website on the browser. So there are a couple of buttons on the top. Uh, let's show this one. That will be the home page of uh, YouTube. And uh, because I haven't used this, uh, this, these are just kind of the most popular videos. Um, there's a refresh button. There's a voice search button. There is a search function for the YouTube website. Now the keyboard comes up, the keyboard also comes up on your phone. So you can type on your phone if you wanted to. And the other one would be uh, basically a Google search function. Um, not too sure why uh, I would use this, but you know, something you can do. All right, let's go back to our own YouTube channel so we don't get a copyright strike. Um, let's search for Ready, Steady, Charge. Ah, there it is. Let's click on that. So that will bring us to the search page. And here is our YouTube channel. Let's pick a video to watch. This is our 3,000 kilometer EV road trip. And let's start watching that. Now, of course, the uh, audio is coming out of the vehicle speakers. Um, so, you know, if you have really good speakers in your vehicle, it's actually quite nice. So let me just turn that down a bit. And, uh, you know, there's also a full screen function. 
So this will make a full screen. And then there's also a separate full screen button here. Uh, I don't know, sometimes it's hit and miss. So just go with whatever, you know, looks good on the display. So yeah, basically you can just watch YouTube, you know, in your vehicle using Android Auto. Now, CarStream is an app that is not officially supported by Android Auto. And of course, being able to watch videos on Android Auto is not officially how the Android Auto app is supposed to be used. Which means if you start driving, Android Auto will not turn off CarStream. Now that you have seen how the hardware works, which is basically phone plugged into the car, and then you have your Android Auto. I am going to talk about the software setup next, and it's going to take some time to explain. If you don't want to see that, you can skip ahead to the next part. Because CarStream is not an official app that works with Android Auto, it does take a little bit of effort on the software side to make it work. So this is going to be a quick guide and does not include a lot of the troubleshooting steps. Uh, sometimes doing this feels like a lot of trial and error. There are a lot of tutorials out there um, involving CarStream and other unofficial Android Auto apps that says you do not need a rooted Android device. Um, I have tried this and it didn't seem to work. So I would say in order for it to work, uh, you really need a rooted Android device. So your mileage may vary, but from my experience, uh, you need a rooted device. And remember, rooting your phone can be inherently risky. You risk losing all your data, or even worse, you risk breaking your phone, so completely breaking your device uh, in the software sense. After you have a rooted device, um, next thing you need to do is turn on installation of apps from unknown sources. You have to turn this on for both the Android system and for the Android Auto app. The next step is to download the APK files you need. APK files are the installation files for apps on Android. So you will definitely need the CarStream APK file, and you will also need a patching app APK file. I used uh, Android Auto AIO Tweaker. There is another app called the Android Auto Phenotype, but um, it seems like the AIO Tweaker has more functions to it. So once you have these downloaded, it's time to install them. After you install these apps, you should run them for the first time on the phone. When you run them on a rooted device, uh, the Super SU will prompt you to grant Super User uh, permission to both apps. Uh, you only have to grant this per permission once, and as you see, uh, I have already granted their permission. So you only have to grant it once, the first time you start up the app, and then every time after that, it already has the permission granted. Now, next thing to do is to open the Android Auto AIO Tweaker. This is an app that will patch your Android Auto app to allow for non-official apps to run on Android Auto. So as you can see here, I have already done the patching. Uh, here you can select which apps you want the patching to be done, and then you can click patch. And after this step, you will have to restart your phone before the app can be used on Android Auto. The last thing to do is to try it out on your vehicle. So restart your phone, plug it into your vehicle, go to Android Auto and see if the app comes up. If you try to do this, all the best to you because it's really not a straightforward process for a lot of people. And since this is an unofficial app, and an unofficial way to use the app, do expect glitches and bugs. Thank you so much for watching our video in our series, Do It Like Tesla. Please leave a comment and let us know what you think of this video series and uh, what else we should cover. We have some ideas, such as playing The Witcher on the Kona and trying to replicate Sentry Mode. So make sure you're subscribed for that. My name is Solomon, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.